guys, this event, I, I, I have, I have a lot of thoughts about it. Let's, let's put it that way. Hi, welcome back to another Revive Witch video. My name is Lace, and today we're going to be talking about Phantom Mirror of Stars event. This bad boy just launched about one day ago, and if you guys have not checked out my event guide, like hop on over to my channel. It, it was probably the last video that I uploaded. And although the event guide is kind of relevant, there are a couple of key changes, which are for the most part really good. Yeah, for the most part, it's actually good stuff. I guess I just want to say that this is certainly my first time experiencing this event or even Revive Witch more than the beta. I'm definitely not a CN player and so I think a lot of expectations and hopes that I had <laughs> kind of got shattered, let's put it that way. All right, and so with that being said, let's jump right into the content. So as you can see, we have the S11, 1213 up to 14, which is not available yet. And then in about a week's time, we are gonna get the hard mode open up. And so you guys already know it, we're gonna be doing the big mana farming over there. It is gonna be really freaking dank. And so let me start off with the part where like my hopes and dreams were shattered. Because to be honest, a lot of this event was changed for the better from the CN version or at least what we were told. And so if you guys have had a chance to go through like the Desire, the Devour and the Seduce, you guys will have watched the cutscenes. And unfortunately, I can't replay the cutscenes, but to be honest, there's not really much to show you guys and that that is why my hopes and dreams were shattered. I don't know about you guys, but like for me, when I was climbing through this tower and actually like walking through the maps and stuff and having story attached to it, like very much like this, right guys? And then like you'd go around and then you'd interact with people and then you could actually see things going on. On top of that, you got the cool sunnies. Like <laughs> it's a cool cat mango bay, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, this is most certainly what I was expecting and I was really hoping that the event would build, well, it would be something like this, right? We would actually be going around, walking around in the maps and there'd be like characters coming around to meet us and stuff. And maybe I don't even care if there is like any environmentals, but unfortunately what it turned out to be was, um, it was, it was a lot of text, man. It felt like, it felt like I was texting a character and then the character was texting me back. And then sometimes the character was also describing what was happening. And I'm sorry that this is such an opinion piece, but like, I, I was actually just so let down about that. It's... Oh, I don't know, man. From that point of view, it just feels so incredibly low effort. And I hate saying that because they've clearly put a lot of work into the game itself. It's just that this event... Uh, <laughs> oh my god. Like, guys, we have like a full-fledged pixel RPG with like an awesome engine and all of that. And they freaking resort to pretty much telling it like it's a novel or like a storybook, right? Like, oh my god, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Pixel Neko, but this ain't it. Anyway, Anyway, I'm gonna shut up about that. You guys let me know how you feel about it down in the comments, but like, I, I don't know about you, but I was really, really invested in the story when I was playing the story mode. And so I was really hyped about this, but unfortunately, yeah, everything shattered. All right, let's move on to all the good things. Let's. Let's talk about the good things now. Okay, and so to start things off, you guys see this down here. More stars will drop when using the following dolls. So if you manage to pull Nana, and if you are going for Metamorphosis, and if you do have Ella and the rest, from the CN server, the maximum amount of like extra stars that we normally get was capped at 50%. And so yeah, just like these guys up here previously, you could not take more than 50% bonus. So for example, if you combine like Nana and Ella and then Witch, that would already be capping your yellow star gain. However, they've actually removed that limit, which is really cool. And so what that means is that the bonus amount of stars is actually 20 plus 20 plus 20, which is 60 and then another 30. So that's 90% bonus. And so what this means is that you can theoretically get up to almost double the amount of star income as you clear each of the stages. That's a good change. That's a positive change because I look at the shop and the shop, like for the most part, it looks like the same. I think it's going to cost about the same amount of stamina as it was on CN to clear this out. And so that just means that you can spend less stamina on this store or even in this game mode if you wish. All right, and so the next thing I do want to talk about is actually the store itself. So as you can see, Akarante over here looking real cute. However, let's switch over to the hard mode shop. And what I do want to show you guys uh, is this guy over here. This is actually so awesome. So as you can see, this is an advanced runestone. It refreshes equipment with powerful attributes with a small chance. So if you guys didn't know, it's 15% chance. This 15% chance to gain new attributes. So essentially, if I go over to an equipment, 
equipment. And so I have a piece of equipment here and you can see that there are only two lines of stab bonuses and there is one locked up. And so that piece of rock that I just showed you just then has a 15% chance like when you, oh yeah, it's right here. If you do end up using one of these guys, it has a 15% chance to unlock this slot and get you a big thicky bonus. However, whatever that bonus is, it cannot be changed. So do keep that in mind. And so if you guys have been equipment farming, you will realize how significant that is because of the amount of stamina that we have to sink to actually even get only one of these guys. However, from just this event itself, we are going to be able to farm 10 of these advanced rune stones, which is... It's honestly incredible to see. When the initial translations for the hard mode shop came out, a lot of people were actually skeptical saying that this was like one of the ones that were a tier below. And the ones that are a tier below just do not give you that third line, which is what you want. But my dudes, here we have confirmation. We do know that it is actually the advanced runestone. This is going to get us those lines. And hopefully, hopefully all events from now on are actually going to give these guys. And if you guys have not actually like gone ahead with the equipment farming, let me just kind of show you how gruesome it is to actually get one of those. So my dudes, I am in the doll equipment shop where we farm for these red currencies, the Stone of Promise, and you get about, I believe, 23 from every uh, stage eight of these guys. And so stage eight of Oath of Protection, blah, 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 they all cost 30 stamina. We only get 23 for 30 stamina. And so using these red rocks, we scroll down over here, you can see advanced runestone, it costs 800 and you can only buy one a week. And so you guys can already imagine how much freaking stamina this thing costs, right? So you've got the eight of this currency required divided by 23 because 23 is how much you get each run and then that's probably going to take you down to about 40 runs 35 to 40 runs 35 to 40 runs is an insane amount of stamina let's put it that way it's i think it's like what like 1.2k stamina 1.2k stamina is like several days worth of stamina just to get one of these and the fact that we're actually able to get 10 from the event like oh my god thank god thank freaking god Anyway, so that is really awesome to see, but not only that, we are also getting Stones of Promise. Oh, I am so, so freaking happy that we are at least getting some of this. Each time we purchase it, we get 50 of the Stones of Promise, and there are 40 times that we can purchase it. So that comes out to about 2,000 Stones of Promise. And so what that means is that on top of farming for the red currency and getting like the skill books or whatever we're trying to farm at the time, we will also be inadvertently getting these Stones of Promise, and this will either get you that additional additional advanced runestone or you can buy two of those chests. And so my dudes, we are back in the shop and the chest that I'm talking about is this guy over here, legendary equipment box. These guys are both good and bad. Let's put it that way because oh my god, I actually hate the fact that there is a 50% chance of getting like a piece of shit. Like for all of the weapons, all of the armors and stuff, you can see that there are two shields, there are two of these hammers, two swords, and then I click on the first one. It's got a pretty sick effect. It's at 740 gear score. I'm like, okay, I want that. I want that. And then I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh, there's another shield. I wonder what kind of effect it gives. And boom, it gives nothing at all. Like, bro, seriously, why why even bother? Why even bother? They just really want to make me cry right now. And I don't know how many you guys have opened up, but I've opened up a couple and I have not gotten a single one with the effect yet. And so that means that every time I've opened up the chest, I've lost the coin flip. Again, I, I can't stop losing coin flips, my guys. However, all of that is criticism of the box itself, of the legendary equipment box. It's not criticism of the event. If anything, the event is freaking, freaking cracked. The fact that we are gonna be able to to farm up 2,000 of the red currencies like these guys over here is it's a good thing. All right, and so after that, I do want to talk about the rest of the mats because like it is quite good. We got the iris feathers, which we sorely, sorely need. But on top of that, we also see the solid scales. Guys, I know that like everyone's running mage comps and stuff, but always clear out the shop, even the solid scales, because eventually we are going to need them. And so just remember a general guideline, solid scales are for your physical units and you got your iris feathers for your magical units. And what I do know, like from like looking ahead with the clairvoyance, I do believe that physical comps are very relevant uh, as we go on. I'm talking like the Twinel Ella Metamorphosis comp, you know, you got the Ella needing the solid scales. Selenia Akasha, I believe Akasha gets a buff and then she becomes quite good. So guys, don't be like, oh, I'm just going to clear out like Iris Feathers and then a couple of these and the Advanced Runestones and then call it a day. Like, I would really encourage you to clear out the entire shop. But otherwise, in terms of the shop, the last thing I do want to talk about is these guys over here, which is really, really nice.
nice because I don't know about you guys, but I have not successfully bought a piece of furniture yet. And the reason that I haven't bought a single piece is just because I like to save up and then buy the whole set at once. And so that's a personal problem. However, as you can see, garden bench, starlight fountain, astronomical telescope. And then if I head on back over to the yellow shop, you'll see that we have a lot more. We've got the starlight foot street lamp, I think. Where did the foot come from? I'm so sorry. And then the garden arch over here. So if I actually come over to the shop over here and then under supplies in the furniture shop, as you can see, we have the starlight street lamp. We've got the astronomical telescope. We do have the garden arch. I, I love it. I love the fact that we are actually able to get all of these guys from the event itself. However, what you will notice is that there are 20 days remaining. So this is a limited time set. So I would highly encourage you actually get these guys because I don't know how you guys are doing in your witch courtyard, but that mirror thing, like the mirror that where you send your characters off to the expeditions to farm you gemmies and stuff. And oh my God, look at that, look at that. This system actually consumes an insane amount of characters and their stamina like quite quickly. And honestly, whenever one of these guys finish and I go back and then I go back to the cottage, like my doll occupancies, it's it's almost always full. And the reason that it's almost always full is because like I am consuming or I am finishing those tasks faster than these dolls can recover. And so my dudes, don't ignore the furniture set, at least get three sets if you can help it. Like if you look over here, the comfort level, it does max out at 280. And so yeah, that really just drives home the point, clear out the shop. And so coming back over here, the last thing I do want to talk about is like the fact that we got gated <laughs> over here. We got gapped real hard. So if you guys do remember, we have Desire, Seduce, Devour, the intent tangible and then we are going to keep going on with another seven stages oh sorry we go up to seven stages so there's going to be a one four one five one six and then one seven which is going to be the boss mode and so what i do want to say about this is that like you can see they do drop different types of quartz so this one's for the guardians and then i believe one of them is for the assassins this one and then this guy's for the destroyers and so what i do want to say is that if you don't really need these guys if you have over farmed on them then don't farm them out even more like i'm pretty sure that this event has only been out for less than 24 hours and if i'm not wrong i've already farmed up uh 2560 of the coins and that's just using a couple of the different stamina pots and refreshing like maybe once or twice so I honestly wouldn't be too worried in actually being able to clear out all of the, the yellow star things in the redemption shop. So realistically speaking, if you guys are refreshing, this kind of can be ignored. You can certainly go ahead and continue your equipment farming. You can like go and get your ascensions or like your skill mats. And then when the other ones unlock, so I'm talking like the healer or like the mage one, then you could definitely farm those to make up the rest of your yellow stars. And so having farmed 2560 of the yellow stars, I do want to talk a little bit about the drop rate of these guys. And so generally speaking, I sunk like all of my stamina into the S13 in which I got the Assassin Quartz, right? And to just give you guys like a baseline and the Assassin Quartz, both of these, I'm pretty sure they were at about zero. And so you guys can kind of divide that, right? Like you got 27 of this and then you got the 16 of this. If I've spent 25, 60 of these coins or rather I've earned that many, that means that I've sunk about like 1.25K stamina and that was the results. This is how much I've gotten from all of that. So yeah, the quartz is actually, it's not that significant, but it's like, it's nice. It's nice to have. But yeah, my point still stands. If you do need any of the other mats, just wait for them to open up because uh, yeah, I don't know. Like with the bonus, it's actually really, really easy to clear. Actually, you know what? I did not factor in the bonus. So I probably only spent like 800 stamina rather than like 1.25K, whatever. Because I do have like the Ella and the rest of these three characters. So I did get the 50%. Anyway, I'm sure you guys get the point. And with that, I think that's pretty much it for the event. Uh, there are certainly a lot of good points, especially in regards to the rewards and stuff like the shop and the cumulative rewards. We are getting a lot of nice stuff, a lot of nice stuff that we actually need at this point in the game. However, there is one thing that is letting me down and it was the thing that I was unfortunately like most excited for and that's the story or, or the lack of a story. All right, and so with that being said, there's not really any content left to cover. And so I wanna pass the question on to you guys. How are you guys feeling about this Phantom Mirror of Star event this is like kind of your first impressions i do know that a lot of people do hold out until the first event before they're like oh, okay well this is kind of boring and so i'm going to drop the game are you are you one of these kinds of people or maybe you're like okay well this is just like a nice little piece of progression we're doing it like piece by piece this is okay i'm going to keep going on maybe you guys aren't bothered by the lack of animation or production value
value in these stories. And so whatever your thoughts are, do let me know down in the comments below and I would really appreciate that because it means you've watched up until the end of the video and so thank you guys so much. But otherwise, if this video has helped you, then please consider a like on it. And if you do like what you see, then please consider a sub. And if you would like to support the channel, we do have some links down in the description below. We've got a membership thing as well as some affiliate links. But otherwise, as Akaranto once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.